very serious problem. It's kind of a problem, boy. It's about capital and labor. Now, I wouldn't bother to make such a point of all this, except later on if you happen to see a bunch of naked women running through the woods. I wouldn't want you to get the wrong impression. This play is full of symbols. I work at the Sleep Attack Pajama Factory in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Pajama game is the game I'm in, and I'm proud to be in the pajama game I love in Iowa. I can tell you per second exactly how many stitches goes into a pair of pajamas. I can time anything. You'll see when I hit that button. All right. Bucket. Anybody see my lunch bucket? I told you he was sharp. That is the cutest one. He's relaxing. But there's another side to it. About press? If we don't get the seven and a half cents raised by the first of the month, we strike. You said it. You said it. You see how these ideas keep creeping through? That's what takes the string up the sexy part. Here comes my boss, Mr. Hassler. There's Capital for ya. Capital with a capital C. He's a great economist. Waste, waste, waste! Turn off those damn lights! You think J.P. Morgan garbage leaving lights burning all over Wall Street? Where's my secretary? Gladys! Yes, Mr. Hassler. I love her, I love her. Where's the new superintendent? Uh, we can't find him. Here's Mabel, she'll know. Where's Sorokin? Oh, he's ran the plant somewhere, Mr. Hassler. First there was a leak in the water tower, and then I think he went down to the boiler room. Well, go find him. Yes, Mr. Hassler. Gladys, take a letter. Yes, sir. Board of Directors, employees demand for seven and a half cent raise deemed absolutely unnecessary. Heinz? Yes, sir. You keep things moving. OK, Chief. All right, girls, hurry up. I've got my stopwatch on you. Hurry up.
We can fix this while they're at lunch. No, no, it's the number nine machine. This new Super Bowl lasts. He's a Chicago guy. He doesn't belong in this town. The whole second floor was broke down and they couldn't find it. He was fixing a boiler. And then he blames me. I don't have to take that off nobody. Bring me a screwdriver. There's plenty of other places that I can work. You know they're paying down at the packing plant? 93 up, and that ain't hay either. Screwdriver! Oh, Mr. Sorokin! Yes, Mabel? Mr. Hatcher's down in the shipping room. He wants you right away. I've got to fix this. Oh, you yes, know? yes, I know. Mr. Hatcher's kind of difficult sometimes. You're the third superintendent we've had all year. Oh, yeah? And I'm the last one you're gonna have. You know why? Because I want this job. Oh, you don't say. Now you're talking, boy. Bring me a switch. I'll tell him you're awful busy. Thanks. Hey, and let me tell you something. To pay 84 up down at the casket company. My gosh, you'd be a sensation up at the casket company. Maybe they could hire you as a test and you could lay around the coffins all day long. Now hurry it up. I am hurry. Hurry faster! Hey, you can't do that to me. The hell I can't? I just did. Well, I'll fix you. I'll get the grievance committee. Go get them, it'll give you something to do. Now my weak arm, too. Go away, boy. You bother me. That grievance committee can cost quite a Reuben. This whole town's a Reuben. You'll get used to it. Sure hope so. We're gonna need a larger switch and also need to get a fuse. I'll go down to the storehouse. Thanks. You go help him.
beat him up. Well, he was dangling his arm around like it was her terrible. Oh, yeah? Well, let him take it up to the grievance committee. He's doing that. Don't worry. Here comes Babe Williams. I'd be delighted to talk to him. All right, mister. Here is the grievance committee. Oh, so this is the grievance committee. That's right, Mr. Sorokin. This is the committee. Charlie, you were right. This grievance committee is different. Never mind the snow jump. I'm sorry. Look, I shoved the kid. What's the next move? He says you hit him. No, I just... Look, Miss Wilson, I've got quite a few problems... Her name is Miss Williams. Oh, what's the difference? I'm sorry, Miss well, Williams. Well, you know the committee's right. Take it easy, May. Look, Mr. Sorokin, I've got quite a few problems of my own right now. This over here says you sucked him. He does? Yes, Let's I, I shoved him. It sounds more refined. Uh, Mr. Sorokin, Mr. Hassel wants to see you in his office right away. Just tell him to... Tell him okay. But this is a crisis. The tops are 15 minutes behind the bottoms. Let's be practical, Miss Williams. This is a whole lot of damned nonsense. We don't have to think so, Mr. Sorokin. You're not supposed to strike an employee. We have rules about that. For both sides, I hope. Look, Miss Williams, I'm going to spread it on the table for you. This boy needs vocational guidance. You think so? I do. I don't believe he's happy as a factory helper. He wants to be a bank president. Well, I don't see what all this has to do with it. Oh, forget it. Well, it seems you haven't made a very good impression on our new superintendent. She ain't got no right to shove me around, especially on the weak arm. Look, Miss Williams, I've got to get this factory going. Can we take this up at a later time? Of course we can, Mr. Sorokin. That's in the rule book, too. Go tell the nurse to check your arm and send me a report, okay? Can't shove me around. It was broke once already. Miss Williams, I'd like to thank you for your cooperation today. It's all in the rule book. I must read that rule book sometime. You certainly should. All I have to say is you have the cutest grievance committee I've ever had to deal with. All right, girls. Hurry up. Can't waste time. Hurry up. You've got to have confidence in me. I only said. Don't mind me talking about no ultimatums and no strikes. That's seven and a half cents. Wait a minute. There ain't no question we're going to get that seven and a half cent raise. Well, other companies are getting it, and we're entitled to it. But we got to be smart. The wait till old Hassel's got so many orders coming in, he can't afford to shut us down. Then we got him. You bet. Well, I wouldn't want no super to try and shove me around. Hiya, friend. Hello. Uh, say, babe, what about that kid that got this? What did Super have to say for himself? Oh, that's one of the birds, Chris. Well, the kid hasn't even got a bruise on his arm. He's a faker. You think so, huh, babe? Oh, sure, he's a phony. Why, if that guy's stroking it, really, he'd be faking me, too. Okay. Mr. Sorokin is so strong. He's so wonderful. What's this? The new silver. I think he's simply woo-woo. Don't you? I didn't notice. I noticed.
Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Obviously, certainly, naturally. Ha! Yes. 
on their coal machine without electricity. It's just like Fulton Lewis Jr. said last night. Do you uh, listen to Fulton Lewis Jr., Sorokin? Well, I'm rather flexible in the matter, Mr. Hassler. Uh, say as he got their number. Keen mind, one of the greatest thinkers in the country today. Should be in every executive's contract to listen to him night. This book! This book shouldn't be left lying around. Where's my secretary? Gladys! Chicago White Sox. The old man's got a case of book eyes, doesn't he? Oh, don't say. Watch if he's got a skeleton locked in there. Press, this is Sorokin speaking. Say, whatever happened to that helper I supposedly sucked, I'd like to get it settled. Could you send out the grievance committee? No, right away. Thanks. Now, uh, Mabel, 
Tell me about this Babe Williams girl. Yes, I heard you had an eye for her. She married? No, not quite. What do you mean, not quite? Well, she was engaged to be married once to the Johnson boy. Then one day at a football game, she pushed him over the edge of the bleachers. Needless to say, that did end the engagement. <laughs> An outdoor girl. Gladys is crying. She's hysterical. <coughs> oh, I don't know. You do know Mr. Hatcher. She brought the ledger down here to enter the cost totals. Well, well, why in damn couldn't somebody say so? The president, it's very urgent that you get down here. I'd like to see the grievance committee very soon. Thank you. So what's going on there? Nothing. I just noticed Babe around the office. Why are you asking? No reason. Why? You think I'm into her? Well, that's the word around town. Really? Next thing you know, they'll be talking about us around town. <laughs> oh, don't think it hasn't been mentioned. <laughs> Memo. Cutting foreman. Too many rejects on rayon crank numbers. Oh, yes. Come in. Okay, Mr. Hatcher. I'll be there right away. Look into it and report back. Take a seat, Ms. Williams. Mr. Hatcher wants to get out the and letters, but Gladys is still crying. I'd like to talk to you about that assault and battery case. Oh, well, we just thought we'd forget about that, Mr. Sorokin. Mike, really? We, yeah, we all knew that engine arm was a load of nonsense. To tell you the truth, we've had trouble with him before. I can believe that. If only you knew what it took for me to make him kick across the screwdriver, been justified if I'd hit him. Well, we won't go into that. But anyhow, we have it down in our books as just a slight punch. Personally, I think a little physical punch man is good for someone in once in a while. Oh, you do, Captain Bly? Well, no, not really. <laughs> Take a seat, will you, Miss Williams? I'd like to talk to you. How about a date? What? How about going out to dinner sometime? Well, I don't know. Maybe check up on some of the local hotspots? Thanks, but I don't think so. What is the strange power I have over women? It really wouldn't work, not at all. Looks like I struck out that time. Oh, it's nothing personal. But you see, you're the superintendent. I'm the grievance committee. Memo, timekeeper. Make sure all girls fill out time cards correctly and. Memo to Sid Sorokin. Hey there, you with the stars in your eyes. Love never made a fool of you. You used to be too wise. Yeah. Love never made a fool of you. 
Not until now. Yeah, I was once. I hear ya. Don't rub it in. Ah, shut up! Forget her. Thank <laughs> you. 
gentleman of the speaker. And at this point in time, he gives me great, great pleasure to introduce you. Uh, he doesn't actually need no introduction. I'm kind of we know him at all. How about Mr. Myron Hassel? Okay, Mr. Hassel. Uh, thank you. I'm proud to be with you. We're all members of a great industry. And to that industry, we are our lives and our daily bread. In return, we must recognize the stern obligations placed upon us in these terrible times of economic upheaval and governmental chaos. Now, I can never remember a time when competition was so ruthless, dealers so can cankerous, and profit margins sunk so low. My friends, pajamas are at the crossroads. Whether we go on lies in you. Whether your company can weather the storm of rising costs is a grave question. I thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hasser. I'm sure it was great hearing from you. And always a pleasure to have you with us. Now, first thing before we leave the festive board, there will be a knife throwing exhibit held by Professor Vernon Hines. <laughs> and I never miss. The baseball match will start at 1.30 sharp between the finishing room and the ladies' tank. It's a grudge match, and it ought to be good. Now, who wants to be my partner in the three-legged race? <laughs> That's all. Me for the baseball. I want to be in the three-legged race. Now, would it be going to practice? Here, Danny, Danny. This way, you want the nice throwing. Hello, gorgeous. How about another beer? Laura. This way. But the refreshment's standing. No, no, it's this way. Here, Danny, Danny. This way, you want the nice throwing. Well, if it isn't Miss Graven's committee. Oh, hello. I've got a grievance. This new fellow here named Sid Sorokin knocking himself out trying to be a dandy fellow, but he can't make a score. Hey, Eddie, I want an enlargement of this. You tell him Miss Williams is a cold, hard-boiled doll, and he wouldn't like her one bit if he really got to know her. Oh, I would try to tell him, but he wouldn't listen to me. He's stubborn as hell. No, I don't. Some people have no sense at all, John Fool. What happened to you? Stay out in the open, honey. Don't get down in them woods. Now, oh, hard, hard. Now, hard, 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 for rights of bills, Professor Vernon Hines, Master of Flying Blades. In his sensational demonstration of iron nerves and skill, exactly as performed in his professional appearance in front of the crown heads of Missouri and Kansas. Are you ready, Professor? I am ready. Say, is the trained nurse in attendance? The trained nurse is here. The excitement may prove to be too great a strain on some of our fair spectators. Oh. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Ah. Oh. All right, step back, step back, step back. Here we go. show you the act as it should be performed. No, Heinze, we don't want to live. It's too dangerous. Don't make a damn fool out of yourself, Vernon. You do it, man. You're so thin you can't miss. Oh, Heinze, Heinze. Eleven years in the public eye and never a drop of blood. Hey, Heinze, I'll do it. I'll hey, do hey, it. now, don't get foolish. That's a fair thing. You show him, kid. I don't think she should. Oh, she shouldn't. All right, here we go. Hold still and you won't get hurt. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, hi, dear. I'm a little nervous. Making you nervous. How do you think I feel? Where's my apple? I think that's enough. Give that to me. She's shaking. My God, she's shaking. Oh, baby, you better not. Well, something awful. All right, everybody, now just relax. Here we go. One, two, three. I did over. Okay, that's it. Get these tables out of here. Everyone break up. I said get out of here. That's an insult. My skill has never been questioned before. I'll go drown yourself. Hey, kids, guess what? Mr. Hassler is playing first base, and it's so funny. Hassler first base? Holy smoke, let's go. I tell you, I'm not just. I didn't say you were dumb. I said you were wrong. Well, you can't have everything. Where are you going, mate? No place special. 
my return of Petrels, girl. I get along all right. That defiance policy is going to get into trouble one day, Captain Williams. Well, it's been working out right so far. Listen, I've got a new policy in mind for both you and me. Oh? Let's quit fighting. What fight? Come here, Catherine. Where are we going? Babe and Sid are going for a walk together. Oh. Come here, Catherine. The new policy. Gee, babe, you're terrific. You're not so bad yourself. This is my once a year day. Once a year day.
kind that stands out in the crowd, know what I mean? I think you've got what it takes. You know something else? That's a mighty elegant outfit you've got on. Oh, it's just casual. Listen, Prez, what would your wife say? Oh, well, her and me hardly talk anymore. You don't? Certainly not. You know, there's something I like about you. You've got such a swell brain. And so have you. And you're a snappy dresser, too. Oh, I get around. I go for that. I go for you. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs>
I spoke to him personally. He says he wants to meet us in his office tomorrow at noon. Does that mean we won? We won! We won! I'm sorry. Now, mate, calm down. He just wants to talk to us. Should we wait for bed? Why? You know she would get her somebody special. Well, I didn't say she wanted to. She's an awful busy these days. Well, I don't think a girl should get too emotional about the matter. They can take care of yourself. But see, the trouble is, when you start falling for a guy, how hard you know you're going to fall. Oh, hey, babe, we're just talking about you. Oh, why not? Are you coming? No, I've got a date. OK, well, have fun. I will. Here I am. Hi. Did I keep you waiting? Hi. Oh, that makes it much nicer when you get here. Got one more thing to do. Can you wait five minutes? I don't mind anything. I love you. Babe, are you happy? I don't even touch the ground. It's good, isn't it? So good I can hardly believe it. Tell me. Again. Tell me. I love you. Tell me. I love you more than all the heroes in all the history books in the world. Tell me. What a woman. I'll tell you.
This is a nice little show you're putting on, but I don't like it. My job is to turn out goods, and that's what we're going to do. You have a contract. I didn't make it, but it's there. I want a day's work for a day's pay. I can still hire and fire around here, you know. So get back to work. Now! Somebody jammed the line! Who did that? I did! You're fired. vacation I've had in three years. I need one. So long, girls! You! Go get Charlie. We'll be operating again in 15 minutes, so clear out till I call you back.